we had a full moon that was going to fall October the 29th. My favorite time to hunt is the three or four days before a full moon and three to four days after a full moon. And I wanted to make sure Chuck was up here during that perfect time because I just knew, even though I couldn't predict the weather, if we had any kind of a cold snap, that time period was going to be the time we were going to catch some big deer on their feet. temperatures are going to drop into the low 30s, high 20s, highs for the mid 40s. We got in the tree at 3 o'clock. At 3.12, a doe and a fawn came by on a 50-yard trail. Seven minutes after that, I see a buck coming. kill a buck about every five years. That's just the way it goes. No matter what we do, anything that can go wrong will. One thing that's very, very important to learn about deer movement, and actually any game activity, but particular deer movement because we're talking about whitetail deer, is pressure systems. Pressure systems are important, fronts are important, cold fronts are important. When I get, you get a cold front, in late October, around the full moon, deer are going to be on their feet. This particular time we had a rising moon because we were approaching a full moon, high pressure, high skies, which is all the stars were lining up. If you go on and look at a chart on a rising moon, you get a timeline on a rising moon. You can bet within 30 minutes of that time when the moon is active rising, those deer are going to be on their feet. You can watch that. It reverts to the same thing as the morning moon setting. Had a great day, saw 25 or 30 deer. Every other deer that came through there we could have shot, except him. Again, that's just the way our luck goes. 
We watched him chase does in the cornfield for the last 30 minutes of daylight. You're also going to find many times when you have a full moon phase and you don't see deer at the normal times for, you know, right at daylight or an hour after daylight. That's because they're bedded down because they fed all night long, they've been on their feet all night long chasing does, whatever, whatever the case may be. Some of your best bets is, hey, use that to your advantage, get a couple hours extra sleep. We slept in. Casey had to upload some footage. I had some paperwork I had to do. We were being good stewards of our work. We got it done. Deer wasn't moving a whole lot the first hour or two after daylight, so we were going to slip in. 9.30, 10 o'clock, we were going to hunt the rest of the day. Got in there, climbed up, watched deer from the time I sat down till finally about three o'clock we had five does up under us and hey, this was day three, they hadn't let me shoot anything. I was ready to kill a doe. So we shoot this deer at 3.30 in the afternoon. We sat there for another two hours. Weren't seeing anything, so me being the impatient one, I said, Chuck, let's go ahead, get down, get all our stuff gathered up, drag this doe out, and get her back to the truck. I climbed down. Casey is bringing his stuff down. As Soon as I got on the ground, I looked and I see a buck. I'm watching the buck, he's making scrapes, he's hooking some limbs, so I snort wheeze. Here he comes on a rope. He's got to come within 30 yards to get downwind of us. Well, I'm ready. Draw on him when he goes behind a tree, everything's perfect, till he looks dead at me. And I'm standing in the wide open at full draw. I ranged the spot before he got there because I knew where he was coming. 34 yards. Well, he knows something's up, and instead of bolting, he stomps and turns, so I put my 30-yard pin right under his belly. I'm used to hunting crazy deer that fall like a magnet when you shoot at them. I'm used to aiming low. He fell about 18 inches, maybe even two feet.
You know, we've been filming hunts and putting the show together. This is the 12th year. We've never been able to show anything like this before. It's frowned upon. I'm sure we're going to catch flack from doing it now. But it's reality. Who hasn't been there? Y'all, it would have been different if I was shooting at that deer at 70 yards, taking a risky shot, doing something wrong, or being stupid. But I wasn't. I've practiced. I'm confident in my ability. I knew what the deer was going to do. I compensated for what the deer was going to do. He just beat me. There was no way. I, I did everything as right as I could, and I still came up on the losing end of the stick. We followed blood for about 200 yards, jumped the deer up, bedded with some does. He had no clue, he's not hurt. We even saw him the next day chasing does a half a mile from where I shot at him. And anybody that has bow hunted for any length of time has been in my shoes. Stuff happens. You plan, you practice, it's a wild animal. Things happen that are it's just not under your control. Use it as an educational tool, as a teaching tool. We knew what the deer was going to do. We knew he was going to drop. We compensated for it. We were confident in our equipment. Man, crap happens. It's going to happen the longer you hunt, and then if something bad happens like that, you do everything in your ability to recover the animal, make sure that it's not a mortal injury, make sure the animal's gonna be fine, and then you've got to put it out of your mind and get back in the tree. You can't beat yourself up forever because accidents happen. Well, it's November the 13th, 2012. It's three and a half weeks later and I'm sitting with Chuck Sykes's deer and I killed him within 85 yards of the same spot. Chuck actually shot the deer and you can see his wound in his neck here and it's actually where it came out over here. I really believe if he's not a four and a half year old he's one of the biggest three and a half year olds I've ever seen. I'm pretty pretty tickled with him and uh, I'm tickled to be able to get this deer uh, caped out and have a European done, and I'll probably give that to Chuck just because. There's a place I go Sometimes you just gotta get on old Chuck. Let him loosen up a little bit. I am what I am. <laughs> if you sit me down, I'm gonna talk like this. <laughs> plantations, nothing can be better. That would have been good if he hadn't have just bulldozed the camera. <laughs> <laughs>